Men have women in Europe. It's not quite the same. Right now, I'm the only woman in the European Astronaut Corps. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm sure that will evolve too. And uh, you know, that there's a lot of the outstanding young women and, and girls who are, are going to make excellent astronauts in the future. And I think it's good to think about all the ends of the pipeline. You know, in terms of having astronauts, just like Terry said, you follow what's your passion. But we need more women uh, to be involved in engineering and science and what they're finding is that sometimes they need to tell the stories in a different way to make, the, make it something that a nine-year-old girl is interested about. And, and even, uh, I think at Harvey Mudd, uh, they, they changed the way freshman computer science was taught mm -hmm. and they increased the enrollment from 25% to 44%. Mm -hmm. So really trying to look at all the different places where we can you know, understand how to get basically all the people on the planet solving all the planet's problems. Are there specific experiments you'd like to see being done in space in the next, in the coming years? Experiments that you feel passionate about or something that you think we really need to sort of explore in space? Well, I'm, I'm working for the Office of the Chief Technologist here at NASA. And so I'm loaned from the astronaut office to them. And something, now that I've gotten to sort of step back a little bit, something that's really interesting to me is that everything biological that we see up there is interesting. And we say, oh, look at this result. The viruses are more active, and we can design vaccines based on more efficiently finding the active site. You know, that's an interesting biological point. The twin study, many interesting. Every time we do something with biology, it's interesting up there. We don't always understand the mechanism, and so I think we need to do more biology experiments up on the space station. Typically, the uh, astronaut corps has been engineers, scientists, some uh, medical physicians, typically pilots, lots of pilots. What specialty is underrepresented in space that you really think needs to be there? Artists, historians, journalists. journalists. <laughs> well, eventually it would be nice, of course, if we get people to the space station who are professionals at telling the story. I mean, we, we try and share as much as we can. I think pictures have made a huge difference because they're kind of at the borderline between, you know, a technical type of activity and helps it humanize seven. what you're doing. Yeah, you, you know, you, you need to be able to tell the story um, and tell it in a way which is appealing and maybe will will survive the, you know, telling the story today for today's readers, but maybe will even go beyond and maybe inspire people, you know, even in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Um, and so, of course, that would be nice. That said, of course, we are going to have to find people who are able to do that, but at the same time, are also able to work in an operational environment. That is not always the same type of people who go into storytelling, writing, art, and stuff like that. So um, you can't give up that. You still need people who are operationally minded. And it no, takes, I'm I think sorry. it takes, I think telling the story is really important, just like Samantha said, because otherwise, I mean, it, it is everyone's space program, and without that public support, we will not go further, right? But if you don't tell people what we're doing, then people don't know. But it takes actually work and thinking, how do I represent this moment? How do I show, how do I really bring people here? And it takes time and effort to do that. It's like going to, it's like going to your daughter's wedding and thinking that you could be the photographer and be present at the wedding. You know, it's really two different hats to, to do those things and to tend what will actually tell the story of what it was like to be here. So it's an underestimated amount of work and at the same time right now we, you know, we have to uh, have people that can try to do both. That brought up Another question, you said going to your daughter's wedding and being both a participant and a photographer. At some point, long-term life in space means there's going to be children involved. Is space a child-friendly place? Can it be a child-friendly place? I think it brings out the child in all of us. Yeah. <laughs> We're a ways from that, I think. I think we are, we're very far from that. I think the, the only experiments on embryology and the development of embryos that have been made were on small animals, and the embryos did not develop in by far in a normal way. So um, I think we are really progressively understanding that our body at all levels, really starting from the molecular level, from the cellular level, is adapted to gravity. You take gravity out of the equation, and nothing really works anymore the way it's supposed to. Now, of course, in an adult, uh, organism that stays in space for a relatively limited amount of time, even six months, a year now, it will be interesting to see what, you know, what we find out with, with a year flight. 
those effects are wide-ranging and interesting, but they're not dramatic. But on the development of an embryo, they would be dramatic. So I think we are very far from that. And if we want to conceive in space and give birth in space, we would probably need some kind of artificial gravity, I would think. But that's just me guessing. Yeah. <laughs> what about, I've heard that the uh, being in space, the weightlessness of space, really clobbers your sense of smell and taste because the fluids rise up and clogs your sinuses and so forth. So what tasted good in space? What did you like to, what did you enjoy eating in space? Well, no, so Samantha's Italian. <laughs> now, I flew with an Italian as well, and I never understood why he was so sad about the food until I actually went to Italy, and then I thought, oh, no wonder, right? <laughs> He's like, lasagna? You call this lasagna? Yeah. I, I found, you know, nobody goes for the food. Yeah. And, and I don't know if it's a different sense of taste and, and smell, but it's actually, for me, more about being really, really busy, and as the time goes longer, you realize how much there is that you could be doing that you'd like to get done before you go, and how little time. And I ended up more in just the, you know, kind of comfort food, beef stew and macaroni and cheese, and, you know, just that, okay. that kind of, and soup, a lot of chicken soup um, for me. So, and, and because those are also fast and easy to eat, whereas in the beginning I'd have, like, Thai food and rice, and I'd be mixing them together, but after a while you just want to eat and get back to work. What's the most uncomfortable or difficult physical sensation that you have to live with up there? Or, and also emotional sensation. I actually felt great from pretty much the very beginning. Maybe for a few days I had a little bit of that stuff in us that you were referring to. I felt a little bit of pressure in my head, but that went away for a few you know, after a few days, and I remember Butch, my commander back then, who had been up there for several months, already telling me that he would come back eventually and come and go. But in, in my case, it just went away forever, and I, I never really had that again. Um, so, you know, I, I felt great. It was a lot harder to readjust when I came back. <laughs> There's nothing not to like. I, I would say except for losing things in my case. I mean, I, you know, I'm absent-minded. And it's easy for me to lose things here on the things ground. Things float away. And when you don't, you know, you don't remember that you have your phone. I'm a big phone loser. Um, and wallets, too. But uh, fortunately, we don't have to have wallets up there. But you, you forget you have something in your hand, and then it floats away. And fortunately, there's an air circulation system where you can find many of the things in sort of the, the likely suspects of a place. But the, it's really a wonderful place. I mean, I don't know. I would have stayed another another six months in a minute, and I think all of us are actually fairly envious of Scott. So that closed-in sensation that they referred to on the podium, maybe that affects some people more than others. They're boys. <laughs> I mean, the space station is very big. I never felt that I was in a confined space. I mean, it, it's really huge. So imagine that you know, if you're going to, from the very most forward module to the very aft module, which is just a convention, is the way we typically fly. It's about 100 meters, um, over 100 yards or something like that. Um, you, know, it, you know, you can float for, I don't know, probably a couple of minutes straight, you know, until you hit the other end. And then there's, like, modules that branch off to the sides and... Um, so I always felt that there was plenty of space. I mean, that there's a lot of human beings on Earth that have a lot less than that, uh, you know, available to them as a living space. Right. And do you feel since you've been back that uh, something has changed in you forever, either physically or your perspective or emotionally or anything? You know, physically I wouldn't say so. I think I'm, I'm you know, I've, I've gone back to pretty much what it was pre-flight. Um, you know, what, what Scott was saying is very true. In front space, it's unavoidable to realize that we're really in the same boat. I like to call it, you know, the same starship, because from outside, Earth just looks just like that. I mean, it, it's just this this rock, this spherical rock that is flying through space, and well, we, we happen to be on board. <laughs> and some people sometimes say Earth looks fragile from space, but it didn't strike me that way. I mean, it, it looked to me like Earth is, you know, has been there for billions of years is going to be there for a long time to come. We are fragile. We are human. We as human beings are fragile because we depend on this little thin atmosphere and that little thin atmosphere and we depend on it being in a very small range of, of conditions where the balance is such that we can survive. Earth doesn't care. I mean, you know, Earth is going to keep on going. So, you know, that really strikes you very much and, you know, when things happen like, yeah, I'm European, of course, and you know, Europe is going through a pretty big crisis right now with refugees escaping from very harsh conditions and sometimes war. And then 
you know, it really makes you think they're crewmates. You know, this is a starship, they're crewmates. We need to take care of them just like we took care of them on the space station. <laughs> you, you had mentioned that you got, uh, with other uh, astronauts I've, I've spoken with, you know, especially on the shuttle missions where we're talking shorter duration, especially compared to the International Space Station, about time management. Because I remember a lot of them come down there, like, I slept like maybe a couple hours the entire time, you know, and so they were really always really busy doing the, the activities. Do you feel when you get on the ISS that you have to do more time or you have to kind of pace yourself more? Because I, I remember, do you, do you have a difference between shuttle flights and, and or the ISS flights as far as time management? I think, I think everybody's different and it has to do with their ability to time manage, you know, down here as well. I uh, People would say that the space shuttle is like a sprint and then a station is a longer mission and you have to really pace yourself. I actually felt like it was really just a six-month sprint, you know, in that it's, I mean, and you, you do have to pace yourself and you do have to get enough sleep. Candidly, if I went back again, I would actually sleep a little bit more, you know, in that, you know, just stepping back, um, I think... I would sleep a little bit more. Of course, I think that here on Earth as well. But I'm thinking I'll start tomorrow because I didn't really get to start last night. So.